It's a new day. Yes, it is. Wakey, wakey. Time to get up. Good morning, citizens. Up and at them. Fresh and shine. This is your wake up call, people. Come on, the coffee's on. We're going to get you guys circulating on Christian radio. I understand young people. I know what's hip. I know what's on. I know what's lit. I know what's fleet. Nerd. What's up, my nerd? Nerd. I work with a bunch of nerds. I'm a nerd. And uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Rise and shine, nerds. Welcome to the Back Row Morning Show, a part of the Love Thy Nerd Podcast Network and the official exclusive morning show for LTN Radio. I'm Radio Matt. I'm the station manager for LTN Radio. I'm a third generation radio dude and a lifelong nerd. Also, I just got my first Funko Pop of the year. What? It's Dead Man from DC Comics. Hey, uh, and I'm Mo, the shorter yet louder, and some might even say smarter counterpart of the back row. I'm a wife, mom, super fan of all things friends, and I still have Christmas lights up in my house. <laughs> in your house or on your house? In my house. In your house. Inside my house. There's, there are people that I think in my neighborhood, at least three different homes that have just decided we're going to do Christmas lights all year. Yeah. And so they're on every night. They were on this morning when we, when we came to work. Well, you know, if... <laughs> That's what they're using those stimulus checks for, to pay for the, the extra utilities. Have you heard people calling it a stimmy? A stimmy. I hate it. Yep. Got their stimmy from Joey. Uh-huh. Um, so to be fair, the Christmas lights that I have are up on top of our entertainment center and up on top of our cabinets. So they're more decoration. like. Mm, okay. And they're white lights. Mm, so Okay. I mean, All y'all out there judging me because I still got Christmas lights up. It, it, they're white decorative lights at this point. Thank you very much. You can't be mad at them for judging them. You brought it up. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But it was a lesson first thing this Monday morning. Don't judge a book got it. Got before it. you read it. I mean, that's a putting lighting around your entertainment areas is a, becoming a big thing. Yeah. Like there's a whole section at Walmart of, of uh, the LED, LED lights to just put behind your TV. So. Yeah. Some even like know what color yes. is being broadcast on your TV and just amplifies those colors. Yeah, it's kind of cool. That's incredible. Yeah. We're living in the future. So I actually <laughs> bought Chris one of those to put in his stocking, la- not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before. Mm-hmm. They stayed in that box behind his nightstand or next to his nightstand until this past year. <laughs> When the boys both got really into LED lights mm. in their room. And so I found them and I was like, can we put these in one of the boys' stockings, please? <laughs> He's like, yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> Regifted a gift. Uh, well, today on the show, I forgot we are having a show. Oh, yeah, today on right. the show, uh, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about comment section Christians. Mm-hmm. We've also got a Who Said It quiz, Twitter poll, Five Random Facts, and more. But first, today is Monday, May Mar- Move. Mar- Ooh, me Ma Move. We are living in the future, y'all. Me Ma Move. <laughs> March 22nd, 2021. And we got some holidays to celebrate. That's right. Today is National Goof Off Day. Mm-hmm. So get your goof on. No. Not you, off. You, no. What? Yeah, I don't know. Hold on. Goof Turn off. Turn the goof off. That's what it is, right? No. That's not what it means. <laughs> it, they want you to goof off. So you turn yeah, the to goof turn the on. Goof off. No, you turn the goof yeah, on. They want you to goof off. No, turn the goof on. <laughs> if anything, watch the Goofy movie today, okay? It's a good movie. It is a good movie. It's a good movie. One of I my love favorites. that movie. That was one of my favorites as a kid, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think that's the one movie Chris and I both agree on from our childhood that we really love. <laughs> um, it's also... Leaning Tower of Chisa. Yeah. Buddy. Oh. Gosh, I love that <laughs> Such a good movie. I tried to tell you, Goof. <laughs> Uh, that's what we're doing tonight. We are watching that. It is spring break <laughs> here. We are watching that movie. I don't care what my kids say. Uh, it's also World Water Day. Mm-hmm. You got any facts about this one? No. It's 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 you know it's a day of uh, awareness to try and make sure Conserve all the world has water. clean water. Oh, okay. Uh, that you know, maybe that too. Okay. I um, I'm really pulling it out of the air. I don't know what it's for. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got to be one or the other, right? Sure. Conserving water or making sure everyone has clean water. Yeah. Do you remember that thing that came out a couple years ago? Like, we've forgotten, like, all the miracles that has happened before 2020 because 2020 was just such a bummer. Mm-hmm. But I remember, like, a couple years uh, ago, they came out with 
that like powder stuff that you would just pour into like dirty like river water or wherever somewhere else and stir it up and it would clean the water right there. Interesting. Like a like purifier. A, like a purifying lemonade mix <laughs> that you pour in your thing. That's interesting. And it was really neat. And they used it in a uh a TV show or something as like some sort of cool showcase of uh, what was supposed to be fictional TV science, but then they came back at the end of the episode and said, this is a real thing. Uh, you know, it's happening right now over, and it was really neat. I don't remember the TV show. Uh, also, I don't really remember how long ago it was. It might have been five, ten years ago. Who knows? But what is time? Time doesn't exist anymore after 2020. This so, is true. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's really cool. So Sounds if that's like what it. it's for, then celebrate that today, Yeah, I guess. Or drink some water. Figure out what it's for. I got some water right here. I'm going to drink some. And then celebrate the day. Celebrate the day. World Water Day. Wow. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> How's your week been, Mo? Uh, kind of a bummer, huh? Kind of a bummer. Yeah. Currently, <laughs> my eyes are super heavy from a lot of crying that had, that has happened the past week. Um, I think... I think we discussed it a little bit last week um, that with schools reopening, there were going to have to be some changes as far as, you know, students where they wanted to move and if they wanted to go back um, in person or remain completely virtual. And then, um, you know, with my lead teacher, she had she was a split grade. So she had an in-person kindergarten class as well as a virtual first grade class. And so we knew that with going back to school in person five days a week, she wouldn't be able to continue teaching one one class or the other. Mm. Um, and so we were we just kind of were sitting ducks waiting to hear what exactly was going to happen and what the following seven weeks are going to look like. And so finally found out on Thursday of last week that um, I would be we're essentially losing our first grade class which i have had since the last week of august um they are being assigned to one cohort c teacher that is doing all first grade cohort c students in the district which honestly i think is a really good idea Mm. as far as i can tell that's what the district has done they've got a couple of teachers who have requested to be completely virtual Mm. And they are utilizing them as cohort C students for all, all schools okay. in the same grade. Okay. Yeah. So all first grade students within um, our district will be in one online class together, which is wow. kind of cool. Yeah. Taught by one teacher. Okay. Um, yeah. So they are going elsewhere. Those students are being reassigned. I won't get to see them anymore, which was really hard. That was the reason for all the tears the last week. Um, And then saying goodbye to many of them because they have now moved teachers four times and three of those four times I've been with them. Mm. So that was that was pretty difficult. And then having a bunch of the parents say, you know, kind words and encouraging words and then hearing the students. We've got um, twin girls in our class and. It was really fun to see those girls' perspective because you can tell that the parents have just really been encouraging them throughout the week since they found out. And so on Friday, they were like, we are so excited. We're going to miss you, but we're so excited because we get a new teacher, but we're going to miss you. But we're excited. (laughs) They just kept going back and forth, like convincing themselves. We are excited. We really are. But we're going to miss you guys. Um, So that was sweet. But I then also found out that I am being moved lead teachers once again, which has now happened Mm. three times this year. Um, So I will not be with that group of kinder students that I've also been working with. But instead, one of our kinder teachers is the virtual kinder teacher for the district. Mm. And she has 25 students assigned to her. So I will be her aide and assisting her in in that because with our first graders i um ran a lot of the small groups and on mondays and tuesdays i ran the whole class meeting um while my lead teacher was running her kindergarten class right 
So um, having kind of that experience and feeling comfortable leading a virtual C class or a cohort C classroom, um, our principal was like, you know what, we're just going to, we're going to utilize you over here with this <laughs> large group of kindergartners. She went from having 14 students to having 25. Mm. Yeah. So, and you just, you saw it. We all found out over our, our staff meeting, our virtual staff meeting, and you just saw the like weight hit her all at once. At one time, she just, her head went down and she put her hand in her head like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? This is tough. Yikes. Yeah. And at that point, she didn't know that she was getting a new aid and her aid isn't, um, it doesn't feel comfortable in an online setting. So she was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. This isn't, this isn't going to be cohesive for, for us and how we've been working. So anyway, it w- it's been an emotional week and, you know, change is once again upon me. That I feel like that's all my life has been. For... <laughs> right. You haven't had a whole lot of long-term stability when it comes to this job. It's not good for me. <laughs> it's really not. Well, and not just the job, but I mean, the move, the unmove, like right. it, yeah. everything. Can the people who are controlling my life just let it be <laughs> for a little bit, please? Because I'm not in control. <laughs> I realize that. But I feel like there are other people around me who who are the puppet masters, <laughs> and they got to just stop with the strings for a little while. I might lose it. I, I, I got it. I'll <laughs> I'll take over at this point. Uh, we, <laughs> my week uh, has been uh, 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 relatively nice. Oh, uh, very lucky you. <laughs> very uh, <laughs> very chill week, really. Um, <laughs> But no, the, the, uh, did I mention, you know, la- last week I talked about how uh, Eli had a birthday party. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and uh, did I mention what our, our friends, the Kelly's Yes, gave you us? did. Okay. You did. So yeah. we, we had to order. All right, well, I'll, I'll recap you guys. We, uh, the Kelly's got uh, my son an expansion set to... The Super Mario Lego uh, sets, which, uh, if you're unaware, they're not like typical Lego sets uh, in that you have to have this, like, Bluetooth-connected, battery-powered, big Mario figure, and it interacts with certain pieces, uh, certain colors, and whatnot that it jumps on. And so you actually build what is essentially a Super Mario stage, like a level, uh, with these Lego sets. And uh, that being the case, that Mario figure, which you need, does not come in any of the other sets other than the main one. And they got us an expansion set. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, this is great. Mm -hmm. So now we have to order the $50 main set <laughs> so he can even play with this, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't you know. They didn't know. But, <laughs> but uh, so we ordered it uh, and it came in on Wednesday. And uh, even then we knew it was going to be this big deal. So we waited until Friday night after school, Friday afternoon, really, after his last online class, hopefully ever. Uh, and we Brought it all out, poured it all out, separated it, put it together. Uh, had a good old time, and uh, that was the culmination of my week. I mean, it was this was a really chill, chill week, but it was all centered around when that Mario thing was going to come. Every day, Eli's asking, "Is it coming today? I can't wait till the Mario set comes." Every day, and that's. It's been nice to have a week that that was the biggest problem. Yeah, it's just waiting to play. Yeah. <laughs> That is always nice. It is nice. Mm-hmm. I feel like my weeks have been super hectic and super busy, pretty much nonstop for the last several months. And this was the first week that I did not feel like this overwhelming, crushing pressure of deadlines and time. Uh, I even got to spend several hours away from a computer every day, <laughs> which wow. rarely happens. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was nice. It's been a good week. So I'm sorry that you had such a rough week emotionally and and i'm sure physically draining as well Mm -hmm. but uh 
uh, uh, I would like to to think you're happy for me. I am. That I had a good week. I am. <laughs> I'm just having a difficult time showing it right now. That's all. Well, let's take a break right here then. We'll, we'll gather our composure and come back. We've got a top list when we return. But first, this week in Nerdy News. Stick around. This week in Nerdy News, this is LTNN. In a nearly direct update to last week's news story about Among Us and the upcoming airship map, we finally know when it's coming, and it's not that far away. March 31st, the airship map drops on all Among Us games. This update will include new tasks, different starting rooms, and a preliminary account system, which should help us cut down on trolling and just dropping out of games whenever we don't get imposter. You know who you are. You know who you are. Anyway, be prepared for uh, probably some bugs on that first day, because that tends to happen, but it's coming and it's gonna be great. If you don't have Among Us yet, what are you waiting for? It's like five bucks on Steam and free everywhere else. Get on it. Disney revealed the cast and characters for their upcoming series, Monsters at Work. Monsters at Work takes place the day after the Monsters, Inc. power plant started harvesting the laughter of children to fuel the city of Monstropolis, thanks to Mike and Sully's discovery that laughter generates ten times more energy than screams. It follows the story of Tyler Tuskman, an eager young monster who graduated top of his class at Monsters University and always dreamed of becoming a scarer until he lands a job at Monsters, Inc. and discovers that scaring is out and laughter is in. After Tyler is temporarily reassigned to the Monsters, Inc. facilities team, he must work alongside a misfit bunch of mechanics while setting his sights on becoming a jokester. And lastly, in Marvel news, Sony Spider-Man spinoff film Venom, Let There Be Carnage, a sequel to the original Venom, has been delayed. The sequel will introduce Venom's new greatest threat, another symbiote named Carnage. Venom, Let There Be Carnage is now set to premiere on September 17th, 2021. That was This Week in Nerdy News. I am Radio Matt, and this is LTNN. Welcome back to the Back Row Morning Show. I'm Radio Matt. And I'm Mo. And we got a top list for you coming up. And then later in the show, why do us Christians feel emboldened by a comment section? Hmm. But before <laughs> we do anything else, I've got five random facts for you. In Chinese, the words for crisis and opportunity are the same. Mm. Mm-hmm. 80% of people eat their corn on the cob in circles rather than side to side. 80%? 80%. Eat it in circles? Yeah, so like eat around the cob instead oh, of eating side oh, to side. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, I, I know. I interpreted that in my head way differently. It took me a minute, too. <laughs> like, hi, 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 just <laughs> swirls all the way around. <laughs> no, that is swirls, Got exactly it. like you just said. Got it. <laughs> like a, like a, like a typewriter. Well, no, not, not like a typewriter. The opposite of a typewriter. The opposite of a typewriter. Exactly. <laughs> <Got it>. Okay. <laughs> Banging your head against a wall uses 150 calories an hour. I mean, yeah. You, at least it's beneficial somehow. You might have a terrible headache, but <laughs> um, in the course of a lifetime, the average person will grow two meters of nose hair. I am above average. <laughs> <laughs> And lastly, Neil Armstrong insists that he actually said that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. I've heard that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It makes more sense. Yeah. Because. He is. Because without the A, it, he's, he's, a man. he's saying basically the same thing. Because without the A. Man and mankind and both those usages are the same. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I believe him. Mm-hmm. I believe that just, just the, the glitch in the in the uh, vocal box, whatever. 
microphone, yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Just cut that A out. Yep. <laughs> uh, I got a top list for you today. And uh, today we're going to be talking about stupid world records that no one is attempting to beat. Okay. You ready for this? I'm ready. These are fun. Uh, <laughs> first up, most rotations hanging from a power drill. What? This feat probably requires an incredible amount of upper body strength, and it's more interesting in a very bizarre way than plain powerlifting. Still, I wouldn't suggest you try this one at home. The current record is 148 rotations in a minute. Oh, my word. <laughs> Achieved by the legend in his own mind known as the High Gyung. Well, I don't know what that I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious if he puked afterwards. <laughs> you feel like you'd have to, right? Yeah. 60 seconds? That is more than two rotations exactly. a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> I also was kind of Jeff Goldblooming there when I ended that. I, uh, uh, I don't know what that means. <clears throat> Most snails on a face. I don't know how many there are in this one, though. It doesn't say. But, uh, Finn Keller, a young boy from Utah, Utah, has nabbed that rather odd record back in 2009. Still holds it. They covered his head. Stayed on there for 10 seconds. That's disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Most watermelons sliced on an open on a stomach. Sliced open on a stomach. For some strange reason, Guinness has a record for the most watermelons sliced open on a stomach under one minute. The record was set by Bippin Larkin, who cleanly sliced through 48 watermelons using a machete. (gasps) Truth be told, it's not Larkin who deserves the honor, but his super trusting assistant who offered his stomach for the stunt. Yeah. (laughs) With a machete, my goodness. No, thank you. All right, next one's fun. Most number of candles extinguished by farting. Oh, my word. (laughs) Some people are sports heroes, while others are science geniuses, but everyone has a talent. Some of us with talents less obvious than others. Gerald Jesse of the Philippines, for example, has a very unique talent for sure. He holds the record of most candles extinguished, extinguished by farting at five. I'm assuming that means with one fart. (gasps) Knocking. Five candles out. Oh, see, I don't think so. You don't think so? Because it says by farting. And I feel like it would say, like, with a fart. Maybe. We'll have to check it out. I'm going to do more research on that one. (laughs) Put that in your Google search history. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, we got maybe a more thoughtfully common one pulling an airplane we've seen people like pulling Mm -hmm. cars pulling buses with their teeth or something like that right reverend reverend that's a believer right here dr kevin fast who owns several weight pulling records managed to pull an entire 416,299 pound cc 117 globe master 3 airplane for 28 feet back in 2009 Mm. uh Apparently, yeah, it was pretty, pretty difficult. I mean, it's pretty heavy. Well, it's a lot. You know, twenty-eight feet is pretty far to pull something that heavy. But he didn't have to do it with his teeth, which is nice. Listen, our very own Rev Kev is trying to beat those. He's yoked. Trying to beat those odds there. He's 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 beefing up. I just got he can. I want to see him pull an airplane. <laughs> All right, we got. Most toilet seats broken using your head. Oh, my word. Why do people do things like this? Oh, man. Kevin Shelley holds the world record. What is the deal with Kevin? For breaking the most toilet seats in one minute using his head, which is 46. Hmm. I mean. Kevin! (laughs) Uh, Let's see. We got largest weight loss ever. John Brower Minock hailed from Washington State. At the young age of 12, he weighed 298 pounds. His weight increased steadily until he reached a peak weight of 1,400 pounds in 1978. 
That March, he suffered a heart and respiratory failure, and 12 firemen were needed to transport him to the University Hospital in Seattle. Once there, he was diagnosed with a massive edema, and the doctor estimated that he carried 900 pounds of accumulated fluid. He remained in the hospital for two years, lying on two beds, latched together. It required 13 people to roll him over. He was put on a 12,000-calorie diet, and by the time he was discharged discharged in 1980, he had lost 924 pounds, the largest weight loss ever recorded. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's a crazy story to have 900-plus pounds of just accumulated fluid in your body. Yeah, that's insane. Yikes. All right. Let's move on. Most lawsuits filed. Jonathan Lee Richards has sued over 4,000 companies and individuals, and as a result of this, he holds the world record for the largest number of lawsuits filed, including suits against Bill Gates and Pope Benedict, the, uh, what was he, the 16th? When he found out that he held the record, guess what? He tried to sue Guinness Book of World Records, too. <laughs> uh, wow. I mean... Some I wonder how many. I wonder how many were hits and misses. Like I want to know if he's making money. He's I, getting settlements. So I really thought that you were going to say, and because of this, he has blah 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 blah, blah so much money, <laughs> yada yada yada. But you didn't go there. I didn't go there. No. Uh, let's see here. Most T-shirts removed while heading a soccer ball. So you know, keeping it up in the air with your head. Uh. Everyone's not destined to be a multimillionaire like Cristiano Ronaldo or Leo Messi, after all. However, Marcelo Ribeiro de Silva from Brazil holds a record that both superstars can't probably break. The 44-year-old man set a new record for most T-shirts removed while uh, heading a football, but soccer ball here in America, achieving 22 shirts off during Univision's live broadcast of the Ballon de Oro from the Ace Hotel in Los Angeles, California in 2018. So, first of all, he had to have been wearing... All those shirts. All those shirts. (laughs) So, already, not a lot of fluidity of movement. Right. And then he had to take them off while not dropping the the, the, the soccer ball. I mean, it's just nuts. That's nuts. Uh, Most metal eaten. (sighs) Mikel Lotito, who I passed my away, teeth hurt. <laughs> in he passed away in 2007 at age 57. Was famous for eating nine tons of metal over the course of his lifetime. His meals included a whole Cessna 150 airplane. One time, what? Uh, unsurprisingly, Lotito suffered from pica, a disease that made him crave eating non-edible objects like dirt and glass and metal. Oh my gosh! And lastly for today, toughest groin kick. For any man, getting kicked in the groin is excruciating, no matter how hard the kick. But it does stand to reason that the amount of pain felt would depend on how hard the kick actually was. Seasoned combat expert Roy Kirby currently holds the world record for receiving the hardest kick to the groin, which was delivered by MMA fighter Justice Smith at the speed of 22 miles per hour with 1,100 pounds of force. And Kirby was not wearing a cup. Is Justice Smith a female or a male? I believe it's a male. Mm. See, I feel like they should have had a female. <laughs> this wasn't a, a, a safety training course. No. Well, no, duh. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you go to kick a guy uh-huh. in the groin, you're going to be a little more gentle. I don't think so. Not if you're an MMA fighter. Because all they want to do is destroy people. No. See, I still think... That just with having the full knowledge of how bad it actually hurts, so y'all say. um, Oh, gosh, it's awful. I still think that he would have the likelihood to be a little more gentle, whereas a woman would be like, yeah, okay, y'all want to talk about how bad this hurts me. (laughs) I want to be that person that gets to kick them. Pick me next time, please. My goodness. I got some anger <laughs> built up. I've been doing a really good job. Thank you. Well. Of, of controlling it for years. Well, speaking of, of uh, anger, 
let's move on to our main topic for today. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so as most of you know, if you've been listening for a while, Mo and I run a Facebook humor group called Back Row Baptist Church, which is currently at about 8.5 thousand people, which is too many. Uh, we were saying like 7.5 thousand people ago that it needed to stop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it just keeps keeps, keeps coming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and honestly, it, it doesn't really have that many incidents. Yeah. Uh, but as our numbers have grown, our ability to keep comment sections calm is starting to slip. Uh, but never before have we had such a big controversial explosion last week after then after when Mo posted a meme. Uh, you want to explain yourself what happened here? <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, Just the start it, of the story. Okay. It, the start. I, I'm scrolling along on Facebook, heading to a friend's house for dinner last Saturday evening. And there's a friend of mine from high school who has posted this meme that pokes fun in somewhat of an offensive manner at Christian culture. Okay. It kind of does, but it, from my perspective, it poked more fun at the people that try and uh, make a mockery of Christianity because it goes, it went over the top in trying to explain ritualistic things that Christians do. Yes. So that is your take after reading it for a second and then taking it in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas even even I, the first time that I saw it, I was like, oh, that's wrong. But then I really took a step back and was like, you know what? But it's it's pretty funny when yeah. you take it for what it is. It's, it's pretty humorous. And it was a bit edgy. But I get definitely that. edgy. Yeah. Not the edgiest thing that's ever been shared, though, in our group. Yeah. But I saw it. And after I allowed myself to not feel offended by it, I said, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to share this because there's a whole group of 8.5 thousand people who may also find this humorous. <laughs> well, and as I said, I was on my way to have dinner mm -hmm. with some friends. And so I shared it. We arrive at said friend's house and I do not look at my phone for another just Two hours or so. Forgot about it. I did. Just drop a I bomb did. in the middle of the group and Com then this completely just forgot. Left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So, so the the way the way this this I can't remember exactly how it was worded, but the way this meme was worded, you know, it was it was talking about how you know Christians say that you know witchcraft is bad or should avoid witchcraft or whatever, and yet they uh, eat the blood and fret flesh of. Oh, you have it. Yeah. Let's read it. So it says. Um, it, it's a retweet, but it says Christians say not to practice witchcraft or astrology, but celebrate the resurrection of a dead guy on the Sunday after the first full moon of the equinox. And then they drink wine and bread as his blood and body and enchant over their animal sacrifices before they feast. Okay. So right away, your first read of that, you're like, what? No, hold on. Wait, 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 I wait, get wait, wait, wait. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so... <laughs> What what breaks this down, though, and what makes this obvious that it's a joke is the fact that they talk about praying over, you know, dinner mm -hmm. as enchanting <laughs> over, their, over their, animal their animal sacrifices. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so clearly, clearly that is a trumped up over the top definition of what we're doing. Right. Clearly, that's a joke. The <laughs> but. You can also see, you can also see how people reading it, just like you, for the first time, would get offended by it. Mm -hmm. So we got that. We completely understood that. The breakdown started happening when nobody would accept the explanation right. for what it was being said. And so we had people like me, a few other uh, people that have been in the group for a long time who understood what was happening here, trying to explain no, you're getting it wrong. But we had far too many people, which I'll admit, most of whom that I saw that were causing a fuss were new to the group. And so maybe didn't have the right tone uh, for the kind of humor we're doing here. It's not minion memes, guys. It's, <laughs> it's you know, funny stuff, actual funny stuff. 
Um, but there are a lot of people who are just jumping on it, whether it, well, all from wrong conclusions. The, the main, the, I guess the more offended ones that I saw were saying, excuse me, I do not worship a dead guy. And other people are like, it literally says resurrection of a dead guy, meaning he's no longer dead. It's yeah. not, in, it's not trying to insinuate Christ is still dead. You're just purposefully reading it wrong. So you can be offended. Uh, <laughs> and then the other one's like, ah, animal sacrifices, ritual enchantments. I don't know what churches you people are going to, but I that's not happening. that one. Must have that. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but the problem oh. came like, I'm okay. I'm okay with you being offended by it. I'm okay with you not understanding it. That's fine. Move on with your life. The problem came when they decided to not only be offended by it, but to react on that by saying things like the person who posted this doesn't sound like a believer mm-hmm. questioning your salvation, uh, saying that you should be re- the, the post should be removed and you should be removed from the group. I can't believe it was a mod who posted this. Maybe this group was something that I, uh, didn't know what it was when I joined, you know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I got, I got defensive of you. And you weren't there. So I got defensive of you. <laughs> well, it's about dang time, okay? <laughs> so I'm there trying to argue with everybody and, and say, look, you need to calm down. You need to ba- take a few steps back and actually understand what this is saying and how over the top it is on purpose. And that's the joke. And uh, we had I had one person contact me. And the – actually, I have it saved. <laughs> Hold on. So I just want you to, I just want you to hear the very first message, the very first message she sent. Yeah. Uh, Where's it at? (laughs) I should have pulled this up earlier. Sorry about that. All right. The very first message was, I was just about to send a group invite to this group to all my friends and on mine and my daughter's food and faith and family blog. Uh, which I won't put the name of here. Uh, but after that horribly offensive post by Megan Oaks and no apology forthcoming, I think it's best I remove myself. And I'm thinking, uh, and I'm thankful I didn't uh, subject my Southern mamas to this type of trash. That was the first message to me who didn't even post the thing. <laughs> Uh, but that was that was the first message. Not a, hey, can you explain this? Or, uh, you know, any kind of hey, did you see this? Need what's, a clarification. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, nothing. A- Which, <laughs> by the way, friend, if you happen to be listening, um, you spelled my name incorrectly. So if you were trying yeah, yes. to <laughs> message me and couldn't figure out how, that's probably why you you added an extra a in there. Um, and also, I too am a Southern mama, so you know. <laughs> But yeah, it's, that's, that was the, you know, that was the start. So I, you know, I responded probably ruder than I should have, but not, uh, not offensively. I said, I mean, I understand you were upset, but I also know that if you were offended by it, you misinterpreted it. That being said, you could have reached out to me to make your case for clarification. Uh, you could have reached out in love. Uh, instead, you decided to come right at me with your best attempt to insult me and my group. And that makes me sad. Uh, and so the conversation went on from there of, well, I didn't insult you. Uh, I'm insulting, blah, 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 you know, just, you know, backtracking and yet still not coming at, at this situation with any kind of attempt to understand it. Right. Or come to any kind of conclusion. Uh, mm-hmm. So I ended the conversation saying, look, uh, I apologize uh, if, if uh, you know, if this has been blown out of proportion for you, but... It is what it is. I'm not going to make her take it down. Uh, I'm not going to make her apologize. (laughs) And uh, we'd love to have you stay in the group. But if you feel like you need to leave, have a good day. And that's essentially how we left it. Mm -hmm. Uh, As far as I can tell, she's still in the group and she hasn't said anything else. Oh, really? Uh, So, I mean... Uh, Maybe, maybe that's, that's nice enough, but here's the deal with our group. We have a set of rules that you have to agree to before you can join and that are constantly posted at the top of the page. And those sets of rules basically lay out, uh, how we conduct ourselves in this group. And when it comes to a post that you see that you don't like, it specifically says, don't comment mean things. If you don't like it and you find it truly offensive, 
keep scrolling. report it or yeah keep scrolling but if you really need to uh speak up about it you can report it to an admin and they will address the situation that didn't happen not even by the one person that contacted me because yeah. they weren't reporting the post right they were just saying uh i thought this group was going to be fun but now i'm not going to share it to anybody because of this one thing that upset me and not a single not a single reach out uh, to me saying, hey, have you seen this? Hey, uh, I think maybe you need to rethink this one. No reports, no nothing. Just a hundred comments, a hundred people commenting about how offensive it was. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. Why Christians feel that it's their first duty to let their voice be heard about how mad they are as opposed to trying to understand the situation or even trying to talk through it with somebody else who might be more knowledgeable about it. What we do is we jump on our keyboards and start typing away because of the anonymity that the screen uh, affords us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that more broadly, Christians and comic sec comment sections. But first, we're going to take a quick break. And I've got five bonus random facts. Stick around. It's Mo from the Back Row Morning Show, and I've got five random facts for you. A jiffy is an actual unit of time for one one hundredth of a second. Pinocchio is Italian for pine head. The average person's left hand does 56% of the typing. Over 2,500 left-handed people are killed from using products made for right-handed people. And giraffes have no vocal cords. For more fun facts and hilarious nonsense, tune in to the Back Row Morning Show Monday through Thursday at 7 a.m. and again at 9 a.m. Central here on LTN Radio. Welcome back to the Back Row Morning Show. I'm Radio Matt. And I'm Mo. And today we're talking about how Christians treat comment sections. But first, we're going to play a quick round of Who Said It? This time I got quotes from Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay. I'll read a quote. Mo's going to try and guess which is which. Play along at home. This one is timed. We got 20 quotes and five minutes to answer them all. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Here we go. No, you're coming with me. I'll not leave you here. I've got to save you. Luke. Correct. If they find us, they will crush us, grind us into tiny pieces, and blast us into oblivion. Obi-Wan. Right. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, Obi-Wan. Good job. You couldn't bring yourself to kill me before, and I don't believe you'll destroy me now. Luke. Correct. The rebellion is reborn today. The war is just beginning, and I will not be the last Jedi. Luke. Good job. Most Eisley spaceport, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Obi-Wan. Good job. I only know one truth. It's time for the Jedi to end. Obi-Wan. Ooh, first wrong. Uh, I don't mind flying, but what you're doing is suicide. Luke? Wrong. <sighs> if you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. See, now I... <laughs> now you've lost your confidence. <laughs> I'll be one. Good job. Uh, who's the more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Luke? Wrong. <sighs> strike me down in anger and I'll always be with you. Luke. Good. I won't fail you. I'm not afraid. Obi-Wan? Nope. You can either profit by this or be destroyed. It's your choice, but I warn you not to underestimate my powers. <sighs> Obi-Wan. Wrong. I thought that was right, too. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. Mm. 
Luke? Right. The Force can have a strong influence on the weak-minded. Luke? Wrong. Uh. The Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. Luke? Wrong. Your overconfidence is your weakness. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Obi-Wan. Jeez, the weak. This is not going to go the way you think. Exactly. (laughs) Luke. Good job. Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? Uh, Obi-Wan. Correct. Let's just say we like to avoid any imperial entanglements. Luke? Wrong. Okay. So you got... uh, Eleven out of twenty. You started really strong. I really you got did. your first six right. I think. Yeah. Um, you got in your own head. Fifty-five yeah. percent uh, average score is seventy-six percent. I think that's high though, because those it is hard. Unless you really watch those movies a lot, it's hard to distinguish them sometimes because they yeah. had them. Because this isn't just like from the original trilogy. That's from you know. Yeah. The first six movies for Obi-Wan and the last six movies for, for Luke. It's pretty good, though. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I've, so my one of my best friends from Italy, she has two boys, and their names are Caleb Skywalker and Gideon Kenobi. <laughs> so I really feel like I failed them <laughs> in a big way. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, last segment, we began talking about an incident that happened in uh, Back Row Baptist Church, our Facebook group community, mm-hmm. uh, where well, we basically had a bunch of uh, keyboard warriors in the comment section, which doesn't commonly happen yeah. in our group. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, as I said, Mo, Mo dropped this meme and then just left. <laughs> and uh, it was not I'm, purposeful. I was I was, you know working on stuff and, and, you know, having a, trying to have a life and, (laughs) and I stumble upon this and just hundreds of angry comments. And so I, I texted Mo, I said, so I think you win an award for uh, most controversial post ever in our group. And she says, Oh no. (laughs) And that's when I realized, oh, okay, so you haven't been reading these. Yeah, no. I said, so can I can I delete this or mm-hmm. can you delete this? Can we just end this? And uh, she says, well, can I read the comments first? Can you <laughs> screenshot them or something? I'm like, I will do my best, but there are so many. Yeah. <laughs> there were a lot. But I wasn't going to make her apologize or anything. She did apologize on her own. Uh, we didn't even talk about anything like that. She she posted an apology that was very kind, and uh, a lot of comments responded in that, and all of them were very nice. The the rudest one that I saw, anyway, was just someone said, glad you took it down. Yeah. And that was, like, the rudest one. Yeah. Um, and our, our, our uh, Bubba, Bubba from, you know, Love Thy Nerd, you know, our, our group here, <laughs> made a comment of, it's, it's really uh, interesting how different this comment section is from that post. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> which and, is really true. And not one of the commenters from my original post commented on my apology post. Mm. Not a, not a single one. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes. So, but I have also already passed comments, total number of comments and total number of reactions, likes, loves, cares, whatever. Than the original post. So That's good. That was my goal. Like, let more people <laughs> see this one than the original one. Now, I still contend, and I actually wrote this in my comment, that you didn't really have anything to apologize for uh, because you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you posted a, a meme and other people got offended by it. Now, mm-hmm. I, it was it a was, uh, 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 high road of you. To apologize anyway, just to calm the waters. But uh, that's also sad that yeah. that's necessary. Yeah. And we do live in this. I think I, I brought this up that, you know, 
Christians slash conservatives, you know, we're, we're the ones that are complaining about the prevalence of cancel culture Mm -hmm. in our society. Like we can't, you can't have cancel culture. You can't just take something that someone said, uh, out of context or, you know, one thing, one wrong tweet, one wrong post, one misunderstood thing, and then just ruin their lives or go, you know, go crazy about how they need to be kicked out of things and removed from things and ostracized and all this kind of stuff. And then something like this happens And we take a misunderstanding and blow it out of proportion and do the exact same thing and demand the exact same kind of thing Mm -hmm. of getting you kicked out, getting you banned, delete this thing. We don't, we don't like it. We don't understand it, but we don't like it. Yeah. And that's the, the crux of my, uh, disdain for that, that reaction to that post. It's just, there, there were so many people who weren't even trying to be educated as to what they were misunderstanding. Yeah. Or why at least understand why you're offended. You can remain offended still after the, you know, we discuss, you know, what the post is actually saying, but at least be open enough to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Nobody seemed very interested in that. Yeah. They just dug in their heels. And even when they were shown why they were uh, misreading it or misinterpreting it, dug them in even further saying, no, I'm offended. And then that's just where, that's where it ends. Mm-hmm. But, and, and I can't take that back now. I'm offended and I won't take it back. Otherwise I'll look weak. Yeah. Uh, but there, <laughs> I did make a note here. Then uh, It was also the day of, uh, of daylight. It was Sunday. It was the day we, oh, we was jumped it ahead. Sunday? Yeah, yeah. It was Sunday, yeah. uh, Sunday evening. So it was the day that we jumped ahead uh, an hour that morning. And so everybody was probably just a little grumpy, grumpier Run, running on an hour. Yeah. Had it, had it happened, sleep. had it happened the day before yeah. I'm willing to bet the response would have been slightly less. <laughs> it's, it's possible. It is possible. Oh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. Oh, uh, lovely. <laughs> But one of the things that our group tries to be different from, because I'm sure if you're a member of, you know, any kind of Christian humor group, meme group or whatever on Facebook, you'll notice that pretty much all of them, every single comment section is like that. Yeah. Just there is just a, a, a unbridled rage of comments in every single meme because there's always people that are offended by it, which makes me think, why are you a member of this group then? Yeah. What are you doing here? If you're offended by all these memes, just leave. Don't announce yourself on the way out. Just leave. I don't. I think someone posted a, call, a response meme to somebody who was getting offended, saying they were going to leave. It's like, uh, this is not the airport. You don't need to announce your departure. Just go. <laughs> Peace <laughs> out. But one of our rules is that we don't have debates. Um, it's part of our. Uh, I don't remember which rule it is. Uh, it's not the don't be a turd, I don't think. I um, I think it's just a part of the this is... Uh, oh, scroll down. It's that one. Thou shalt not be so dang serious. Uh, the whole rule reads as this. Read this carefully. This group is for fun and laughter. It's not a place to get political, legalistic, or persnickety. Don't comment overly serious, sad, or angry messages on a joke. No debates, all in capital letters with an exclamation point at the end of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here's why. There are, across social media in general, there are many, many opportunities for us as believers to get into debates. I probably spent my entire last two years of high school and first year of uh, college doing that almost for a living, getting on debates, getting in debates online with people, mm-hmm. whether it be other Christians or non-believers. Like I thought this was part of my my uh, mission in life to just get out there and defend the faith online, which I believe a lot of us have fallen into, uh, maybe not as deep as I did during those few years, but it, every now and then something is said that's so egregious that we're like, oh, I must defend Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As if, you know, God needed you to, to defend him. Uh-huh. Uh, but <laughs> it, goes the, it goes the other way. But 
it's easy to fall into those traps. And I'm not not really trying to rag on anybody who's done that because, like I said, all of us have. Uh, it's 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 a snare. It's a trap, really. It is a legitimate trap that is set for you, <laughs> uh, oftentimes by the devil himself. Yeah. To, to just stir up strife and cause division. Um, but the problem is the Bible's pretty clear about even the literal word debate and how it is often toxic. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got a few Bible verses. I got Proverbs 25, nine debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Uh, basically saying, if you're going to debate someone, you go one on one with that person. You don't post it in an open forum Mm -hmm. for people to spectate and comment on themselves. And that is exactly what social media is. You can't just comment on statuses and posts and tweets and all that openly and still be in line with what Scripture is telling you to do. If you have a cause, if you have something that you need to argue with somebody, you go, as we commonly, uh, if it's going to be online anyway, as we always uh, say when stuff like that starts to happen in our group, we delete their comments and say, if you'd like to continue this discussion, please go to private message. Yeah. Because you're the only two people that need to hear it. And if you think that that's wrong, then that means that you are trying to trump yourself up. You're Mm -hmm. trying to build up your own image in the eyes of other people. Right. Because it's not about convincing everybody. You're going to tell yourself it is, but it's not. It's look how holy I am. Yeah. I have all the answers. I have all the right. Th- and and I'll be honest, I, for a long time, I fell into that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mindset. Me too. Yeah. I'm going to argue with you because I'm going to win this argument. From the time that I was very young, my dad used to tell me all the time, you just need to be a lawyer when you grow up because you can argue anything. And by the end of it, people are just going to agree with you because they want you to stop talking, which, okay, that like, that's a beautiful thing to me. I am that good of an arguer that I just want people to just agree by the end of it. They're just going to agree just so I can be quiet, but that's not reflective of God's character. <laughs> yep. Uh, Isaiah 58, four, and I'm sorry, all these are in King James version cause it's from a, another website. Uh, but it says, behold ye fast and strife, or sorry, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Basically, it's saying those of you who are doing this just to cause strife and debate, uh, all you're doing, the only reason you're doing it is to broadcast your own opinions and vilify others. Uh, it has nothing to do with defending the faith or anything of that nature. It's all about putting yourself on a pedestal and creating chaos below you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I have a few more. Second Corinthians twelve twenty says, for I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you, uh, such as I would, and I shall be found unto you such as, uh, you would not basically what he's saying, <laughs> uh, when I come, I'm going to find you not as I want to find you, but I'm going to find you doing the crap that I don't want you to be doing, uh, debates, envying, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whispering, swellings, tumults, like all of this kind of stuff is stuff that Paul was saying to the Corinthians. Hey, don't do this crap. Yeah. <laughs> Don't debate, don't strife, don't backbite each other, don't insult each other. That's the other problem that I have with this, this uh, keyboard warrior mindset that Christians get, is that we can't seem to do it in love. We have to do it in outrage. Yeah. To the point where we start insulting people. We had someone on our group, we talked about, I think... Uh, that called, uh, I think called you a princess or a snowflake or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, really? This is, this is what, this is what you're doing. This is, this is okay with you. This is acceptable to you as a person. Yeah. And, and that was after a few, um, 
and I think you talked about this last week, but that was after a few comments that that person had made to someone else, another member of our group in a comment section, Mm -hmm. um, which I had removed and then reached out in private message, messaged her to let her know, Hey, you know, let, let's be a little more kind. This isn't what our group is about this and that blah, blah, blah. If you feel offense message, one of us, let us know. And to which she then called me a princess. Um, (laughs) and again, I am not the princess. I am the queen. (laughs) Um, it's the, uh, the problem I guess that I see is that, and this might've started, I mean, it definitely didn't start with this, but it might've been more emboldened by a lot of the, the conservative church falling in love with Donald Trump so much. Yeah. And then emulating him, yeah. which are uh, two, two, two bad things, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying he was a bad president, but I don't think any of us really disagreed before going into that presidency that he was probably not a great person. <laughs> Just the way he reacted to people, the way he insulted people. He was, he was brutally honest, which was, in a sense, refreshing. But at the same time, he was also just it wasn't the type of personality that we would ever want to emulate. Definitely not put in on any kind of uh, biblical pedestal, right? Uh, the way he treated other people, and I think there were so many people that just got so caught up in this Trumpism uh, <laughs> so deeply that they began to emulate him because they wanted to, because they found it refreshing, and that really meant. It's okay if I insult people, if I think they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't really fall in line. Uh, so it's not even just about debating. Now it's about debating and making sure the other person feels like an idiot for even coming at you with this. Yeah. And actually, that was part of the one person who did reach out to you and message you. That was part of her argument. She says, um, the Bible says Christians... The Bible says, as Christians, we're to call out each other if we feel one is wrong. And for me, in that line, she is very, very largely mistaken because our emotions, our feelings yeah, not <laughs> are not what we're supposed to base um, biblical truth off of. Right. <laughs> I mean... The Bible also says to not follow your heart because it's <laughs> wicked. Um, and that's typically where our emotions come from. Right. You know, they, they stir in our heart. And so I just, I, I really wanted to, and I think that it's a misunderstanding that a lot of Christians do have is if mm-hmm. we feel that it's wrong, if we feel offended by it, then we have to address it. And that's not, Ooh, yeah. yeah, that's not what God says, not you know, at all. um, Take it up against God's word. Is it, then is it false? Then is it something that we truly have reason to feel offense towards? Okay. And then you take it to that person and you take it to that person in a loving manner. Right. Not in a. Skipped a lot of steps. Yeah. Not in a matter (laughs) of battle to wage war (laughs) against this person, because at the end of the day, this person is still your brother or sister in Christ, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. they are still part of your family. And I I may be wrong, but I tend to think that God or desires for us to live in, in unity amongst Mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. We don't all have to feel the same. We don't all have to think the same, but we do all have to love each other and come from an understanding place, you know, at least a place of reconciliation where we can say, okay, I don't agree but I'm going to agree to disagree. Yeah. There's no benefit of the doubt given is what, uh, what the problem was here. Yeah. So nobody was giving you the benefit of the doubt except the people that already understood that it was a joke. Yeah. It's like you were either laughing or at least understood it and, uh, you know, moving on or you were completely offended and thus righteously indignant. Oh, yeah. And questioning my salvation. Right. There was no in between. There was no, I need clarification on this. Right. None of that, Mm -hmm. which was very sad to me. 
Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It's not a, uh, <laughs> if you, if you see something that you feel is wrong, like you said, you need to work that out first. Is it wrong? Mm -hmm. It's only when something is, is 100% confirmed. Oh yeah, that's wrong. That's a sin. That's when you should call that person out. But then you don't do it in public. It is laid out in the Bible that first you go to that person one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. If that person does not repent of the sin, then you take one other party with you. If that person does not, then you take it before the church body, the you know the congregation, right. or you know if it's not a local situation, a a group of people or whatever. If at that point you even still want to try, uh, but it's never a. Get on a soapbox in front of everybody and just start yelling obscenities. It's never, <laughs> that's never the right direction uh, in this. And debates of any kind, really, uh, online or in general, are often fruitless. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about any formal debate, any real debate that happens on a stage. Do any of them accomplish anything? No. Do not, either not parties easily. ever change sides? It's so yeah. rare. That it ever occurs. Now, a civil discourse um, is great. Uh, there's a there's a conservative uh, commentator who largely is very offensive, and I don't like his content. But his name is Stephen Crowder. But he does do one thing that I think is great. He goes uh, to campuses and has very civil, very kind very kind hearted discussions with people that he disagrees with. Yeah. Uh, and tries to explain to them, you know, his position better and uh, maybe clear up some misconceptions that the other side might have while at the same time being willing to hear things uh, from the other side that maybe he hadn't considered. Uh, a few people have changed their minds. His opinion has changed over time. Not much, but still, uh, it's happened, and that's been very kind. Uh, I don't really encourage you to go watch him on a regular basis, <laughs> uh, but you'd recognize him, I think, from a meme. It's the change my mind uh, meme. The guy mm -hmm. sitting behind the table saying, yeah. blank, change my mind. Um, they're very good conversations, very intellectually stimulating. Let's put it that way. Uh, but let me point out to you something here. From Jude 9, if you go read that story, even Michael the archangel did not get into a bait with the devil himself. He let the Lord deal with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't need <laughs> to try and defend God. <laughs> He's bigger than you. <laughs> He's stronger than you. He knows what's going on much better and more clearly than you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let him handle it. The, the compulsion... To have to say something, to have to speak up is something you really have to get under control because more often than not, you're going to speak out of ignorance instead of knowledge. Yeah. And that's the biggest failing of this whole thing, this whole mess. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something else? I saw you pulling something up. Oh, it. so in this entire situation, the from start to finish, there were just two things that really broke my heart. Um, one, the, the comment in the, in the private message from the lady who, you know, we just covered, mm -hmm. um, who thinks that if she feels something is offensive, she has the right to bring it up. And that, that is something, as I said, that is something that I feel like a lot of Christians have a misunderstanding about. So I wanted to address that, but I also wanted to address, um, there were at least a handful of people who in one way or another questioned my salvation, questioned where I was as a believer, which obviously from a personal standpoint, it breaks my heart. But based on nothing but a photo yeah. of a tweet that somebody else tweeted. Yeah. I'm sorry. It just it just <laughs> infuriates me still. <laughs> but from an outside perspective, thinking, you know, the, none of these people are people who personally know me on any level at all. Mm -hmm. Um, but just felt some amount of self-righteousness behind a keyboard to type these words. And had I been a, a baby believer, had I been a new believer and to read those words from someone who considers themselves, themselves a Christian, that would have broke me. Mm. 
that would have made me, well, am I, am I a Christian? And was my salvation real? That in that instant, I ha- being a new believer, if I had been a new believer, that would have been a huge stumbling block yeah. in my walk. And I, you know, we tend to think of stumbling blocks as, well, we shouldn't drink alcohol or we don't need to smoke or, you know, things that are tangible in that way. Well, our words are also stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people fail to remember. The things that we say do have an effect, whether it's face to face or it's through a keyboard. Your words do have an effect. And I'm thankful that it came at me. I'm thankful that those comments were directed at me because I laughed it off. I was able to look at it and be like, okay, guys, you don't know me. Mm -hmm. You've never met me. And those who do know me know how silly that argument is. But had it not been me, had it been anybody else, I would have been reaching out to that person as an outsider reading the comments, I would have been reaching out to that person who was being attacked and just checking and making sure, Hey, are you okay? You know, is everything all right? I want to make sure that you're good because those words have such an effect that I think we tend to forget. We tend to not care about because it's through a keyboard. Yep. So with all that being said, how should we comment online? Uh, This comes from a Desiring God article from uh, John Bloom, and he gives us three three ways of how to comment. So number one, it would be seldom. Proverbs 10, 19 says, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. It says the Bible counsels us to restrain our lips, uh, which in the 21st century includes thumbs, uh, because a fool has many words. We are wise to heed this counsel. It's also helpful to remember that our sin nature gives us an exaggerated sense of self-importance. But gospel humility leads us to esteem others higher than ourselves. Perhaps our opinions aren't needed after all. Secondly, slowly. James 1.19 says, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Uh, If an article or a post makes us angry, we should almost never write in the heat of irritation. In that frame of mind, it is very difficult to be gentle and show perfect courtesy toward all people, as uh, we are told to do in Titus 3.2. It is best to wait and pray. An hour or a day will likely yield a more gracious comment if one is needed at all. And lastly, graciously. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. All things that are said outside of the Bible by fallen humans, especially quickly written social media updates, are limited, deficient, and defective. And all of us read things through the filters of our experience and perspective. We all say and interpret things wrongly. Therefore, we can be gracious and patient, seeking to assume the best of people, which is something that we try and that's something that we've touted many, many times on the show. Don't assume the worst of anybody based on something that they've said or done. Right. Don't attribute to malice what can be attributed to ignorance or misunderstanding Mm -hmm. or anything else. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, when... Uh, When we should comment should be to uh, thank people, to encourage people, to clarify things, or to gently, gently correct. And he makes it specific here. Giving correction should be quite rare. In general, I think too much time is wasted on crafting critiques and comments and then defending those critiques from opponent commenters. But occasionally a glaring factual or doctrinal error may be important enough to warrant a correction. In such cases, we must remember Paul's instruction in 2 Timothy 2, 24 and 25. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. That phrase, patiently enduring evil, is one of those phrases that goes deliberately too far. So 
anything that falls less of that, falls short of that, should be a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. So if someone is posting something that's not deliberately evil, but maybe just a misunderstanding or something that you don't understand, but you think is offensive, even then you should come at that patiently, Mm -hmm. (laughs) not angrily, not forcefully, not quickly, patiently. So all the way up to evil, (laughs) which I believe would be the worst, right? Yeah. (laughs) Can't get worse than evil. Mm Mm-hmm. So evil down, be patient with your responses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. And I said this in my apology post, um, but we also have to remember that, you know, one, God judges things justly. He knows the intent of the heart. He knows the purpose behind the things that are done. Um, And he's far more gracious Mm -hmm. than any of us can ever begin to understand or fathom and far more gracious than any of us can ever begin to be ourselves. And so when we consider that he ultimately is our judge and no, I'm not saying that, you know, judge not lest thou be judge. I'm, I'm not, I'm not leaning in that vein. Please don't hear me say that. But what I am saying is leave the damnation, if you will, to the one who can give it correctly. Yep. So, uh, final thought here, and this is, this is the closing thought from this article too, uh, is remember the sober words from the apostle James In James three, six, he says, the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. James wrote this warning to Christians. Christians set fires in common threads. Let us not set fires through careless words for which we will be held accountable for. Rather, let us restrain our lips slash thumbs. And when we do speak, may it only be to give grace to those who hear. Mm. And with that, we're going to take one more break. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, we will share our latest Twitter poll about comment sections. More Back Row Morning Show to come. Stick around. my nerds we here at love thy nerd are beyond honored that you let our podcast blast in your earbuds each week but we're also a jealous ministry who wants even more of your love and devotion if you haven't made lt and radio a part of your daily routine yet you are missing out not only do you get to hear our exclusive morning shows church nerds and the macro morning show before they are put on the website but you also get radio exclusive shows like bible thump with drew dixon lt and rewind faith and fandom 180 with hector mirai the moment with megan mo oaks nerd history nerdy definitions this week in nerdy news and our lt and specials as well and on top Top of all that, the rest of our airtime is jam packed with the absolute best mix of Christian rock, rap, pop, and indie that is hand curated by Love Thy Nerd just for you. Give us a listen at ltnonair.com or download the Live 365 app on your smartphone to search and favorite LTN Radio. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back to the Back Row Morning Show as things are winding down for the day. But first, we wanted to know, what do you do when someone leaves a rude comment on your post? And uh, in a follow-up tweet, we we requested you be honest because it is an anonymous poll on Twitter. (laughs) I can't see who posted what. Right. Uh, But the four options that we gave were message them directly, reply in kind, ignore them, or report them. What do you think the number one answer was? Mm, reply in kind. No, thank the Lord. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 81.1% said they ignore them. Oh. Which is probably the easiest way to handle it. Yeah. I mean, 
People are going to be rude. They're not going to get less rude if you start interacting with them. Right. That's true. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. In most cases anyway. Yeah. Uh, replying kind was 9.4%. Uh, message them directly. Also 9.4%. Hmm. Uh, nobody said they'd report them, which I don't know. I guess stitches get stitches. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what the mindset is here. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I've reported <laughs> messages before. But, uh, really? I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, only a few. Only the really, really, really bad ones. Okay. Um, But that's where we're at. All right. That's where we're at. Not, not like to the police. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to get him jailed here. I'm just like, maybe you don't belong on social media. That kind of thing. You know? <laughs> No, just the Facebook try and get the, police. Try and, get them, try and get them locked down for a week. Oh my goodness. <laughs> think about it. It's like a timeout. Just think about what you've done. <laughs> Sit in the corner. <laughs> That's the other thing. Um, we removed, we removed a, another comment from that group uh, from a different post. It had okay. nothing to do with your post. Okay. Um, and that person... Tried to post another thing saying, censorship, really? I can't believe that this group of Christians is going to censor the comments. And then uh, that's all I could see in the like preview. Yeah. And so I went to go look at the whole thing to reply and they had removed it themselves. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So they got smart about it, but I still had to reply. So I put a thing in there. Look, there are rules that you agree to to join this group. Mm-hmm. One of those is that we aren't going to debate each other in the comments. Yeah. When we remove debates from the comments, it's not censorship. It's you breaking your word and us rectifying it. Yeah. There is a difference. <laughs> if you're agreeing to rules, you're going to live by the rules or you're going to get kicked out. Make up your That's own group if you want to. Guys. Right? There are literally, literally every other group that's like ours. Let's you just go nuts in the comments unless you start swearing or saying the N word or something. They let you go nuts. We're the one bastion of, of civility, yeah. I feel like, on Facebook. And we're slowly losing the grip on that <laughs> as numbers go up. I am seriously thinking about making it a private group so we'll get less people who know about it. Or see just, it. Listen, <laughs> we've been trying to tell you. The only problem with making a private group is people can't share the posts. Yeah. And I know that's one of the big things is that they like to share the memes on their own pages. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Maybe we'll hit 10,000. We're like, that's all. It's all the members we're allowed to have. Way to go, guys. You did it. <laughs> we and will never we're closed. approve another member. <laughs> and we're closed. You want to invite somebody? You're going to have to leave yourself. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's end with our verse for the day. Our verse for the day is 1 Timothy 6.11. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. That's going to do it for our show today. Be sure to check out all of what we do online at lovethynerd.com. We've got amazing articles on all things nerdy, as well as this show, LTN Radio, and our other podcasts and videos. If you'd like to directly support our mission and become a financial partner with Love Thy Nerd, and specifically with LTN Radio, then please visit lovethynerd.com slash partner. And you can choose LT and radio from the drop down menu. Burp there, sorry. Love Thy Nerd is a qualifying 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift is tax deductible. It's a long, it's a long paragraph to get through without burping. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. Make sure you're following us on all the socials at, at the back row LTN, at LTN on air, and at Love Thy Nerd. And don't forget, we have that fun Facebook group community <laughs> that we, we sure were just talking up. about. I'm sure you really want to join it now. <laughs> For Christian Humor, Back Row Baptist Church. So search us out, join in on the fun, or, you know, watch watch me go downhill Look, from time to time. If you're one of the people that, that just don't get into debates and don't stir up strife, we Please would join love us. to have you join. Absolutely. Please put the balance in the right direction. Yes. <laughs> Lastly, remember that we air first exclusively on LTN Radio, LTNOnAir.com, every Monday through Thursday at 8 a.m. Eastern with an encore at 10 a.m. But if you miss a day or you just can't catch the show live, you can find the Backroom Morning Show podcast version on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Subscribe, rate five stars, and leave a review. All of that will help us out immensely. We'll be back tomorrow morning, and we hope you will, too. Mo, final thought. Everybody's got a funny bone. You just got to find it. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a little out of left field. 
and yet still appropriate. Yeah. So, yeah, all right. I'll go with that. Once again, I'm Radio Matt. And I'm Mo. And remember, if nobody else tells you, we promise that it's true. Jesus loves you, nerd. Nerd.